The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. grateful to have served as the mayor of Cary for the last seven years, and I'm honored to present my eighth State of the Town Address. This annual address is an opportunity to recognize this past year's accomplishments, provide an update on the town's essential services, and highlight why Cary is one of the most desirable places to live, work, raise a family, and do business. As we begin 2015, Cary has a population of over 151,700 and a land mass of nearly 58 square miles spread among two counties. We have the lowest tax rate in Wake County at 35 cents to go along with the highest quality of life. We're an educated and culturally diverse community. About two thirds of our residents have a four year degree and a quarter of our residents have advanced degrees. Almost one in five Cary residents were born in another country, and it's been estimated that less than 5% of our residents were born and raised here in Cary. Our population continues to get older, with 22% of our residents now over 65 years old. Our financial standing remains very strong, with the highest rating from all the bond rating agencies, which is a guarantee to our taxpayers that the town is getting the lowest interest rates possible. In addition, we continue to maintain a reserve balance that is more than triple what is required. Our debt is well below the 15% ceiling at around 11%, and we continue to budget conservatively with the 2014 fiscal year's budget coming in at $17 million less than planned. 13 million of that was cost savings and 4 million from additional revenue. Our community's excellence goes well beyond finances, as we are frequently recognized nationally with numerous accolades. Some of these include the lowest crime rate in the nation for a community our size, the number eight best place to live in the country, the fourth best economy, the fifth best in housing, and the fourth best in education. The raleigh Cary metro area received accolades such as number one for raising a family, number one for home ownership, number two for young professionals, number four for job growth, number four to launch a startup company, number eight for STEM graduates, number 10 for women in business and among the best for raising kids, and number three for a swim friendly locale. These accolades and the quality of life we enjoy are a result of the efforts of many extraordinary people people that love, care, and are passionate about our town, people like our town staff, past and current councils, and our business leaders, but most importantly, the Cary citizens. Without the support and involvement of the Cary citizens over these past many decades, Cary wouldn't be nearly what it is today. This past year, Cary citizens have volunteered by the thousands for boards, commissions, committees, and other groups helping everything from our park system to our police and fire departments. Many of our citizens are actively involved in the planning of our town's future through the Imagine Carry process. This multi-year process, which should conclude later this year, will guide the town in creating policies that support our citizens' vision of the future for the next quarter of a century. Our town is so fortunate to have so many citizens who are knowledgeable, engaged, and active. It's their passion and talents that are crucial to our town's success. Cary continues to be blessed with good elected leadership. This year, the town council will operate with only six members instead of seven since our Mayor Pro Tem Adcock was elected to serve our citizens in the North Carolina legislature. Kerry voters will elect her successor this October, and she or he will begin serving a new four-year term this December. While we'll miss Gail, the good news is that we have gained a strong advocate for Kerry at the state level. The remaining council members average 11 years of service and are professional, respectful, and passionate about keeping Kerry great. 
It's a privilege to be part of such an extraordinary group of leaders. The council and the citizens of Cary are supported by a great town staff. These dedicated men and women are the best of the best, with many of them being recognized as experts in their field of service. They have a strong focus on customer service and continue to outperform their peers in other municipalities by doing more with less. While communities our size have an average of about 11 employees per thousand residents, Cary's efficient operations use less than eight employees per thousand residents. This excellent services Cary residents have grown accustomed to are a direct result of the hard work of the 1,200 employees at the town who have dedicated their lives to serving others. The town's partnership with the Chamber of Commerce continues to boost our economy. With their help, 2014 was another successful year for creating jobs. As a result, Cary's unemployment rate is around 3.5%, which is at the pre-recession level and is considered full employment. During 2014, over 700 new businesses registered to do business in Cary. Most of these were small businesses, which are the backbone of our economy. Some of the notable businesses opening in 2014 include Publix, Fill and Stream, and Trial Card. Other big announcements in 2014 included HCL, which is bringing over a thousand jobs to Regency. In addition, the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina decided to locate their offices in Cary's Western Office Park. Having this newly privatized marketing arm of the North Carolina Department of Commerce located right here in Weston means that visiting companies interested in locating in North Carolina will see Cary first. Several other companies announced significant capital investments and job expansions, including SAS, which opened a new building that will house 600 workers over the next three years. In an update to last year's big job announcement, MetLife reports to having filled nearly 1,100 jobs so far, with about 300 positions remaining. The annual salary for those jobs should average around $110,000 a year. And the MetLife Twin Towers in Weston Office Park should be open and operating this spring. Clearly, the town of Cary continues to enjoy a strong and effective relationship with the Cary Chamber of Commerce and its new Vice President of Economic Development, Kyle Greer. We expect to hear good news and more good news upcome in the upcoming days and months. Cary grew at a responsible, responsible sustainable rate of around 2.85% in 2014, allowing the town to maintain and improve essential services like water, sewer, police, fire protection, and transportation system. Our water plant expansion contracts have been awarded and the construction should take about two years. At the same time, the town's conservation efforts continue to be productive as Cary's per capita usage remains very low. As a result, and once complete, the current water plant expansion should serve Cary's needs for at least a decade. The Western Wake Regional Wastewater Management Facilities are now aligned and were dedicated last November. It will provide wastewater capacity for businesses and residents of Cary, Marsville, Apex, and part of the Research Triangle Park for the next quarter of a century. The plant is very environmentally friendly, using very few chemicals and creating pellets sold as fertilizer. Eventually, those pellets may be used as fuel to run the plant's biosolids dryers, reducing cost. And the water that we're returning to the Cape Fear from this plant, it's clean and safe and, in my opinion, even better than the river water it joins. Our nationally accredited Cary Police Department is one of the main reasons Cary is ranked as the safest city of our size in the United States by the FBI. They are constantly looking for ways to inform and involve our citizens to help keep our community safe. It's programs like Geopolicing, Project Phoenix, Citizens Police Academy, Citizens Assisting Police, and other programs will continue to help keep our homes and businesses safer. As the community grows, the town grows, the department to match the needs. This past fall, a new police beat with six officers was added in Northwest Cary in an area west of Highway 55. 
and I anticipate an additional officers to be requested in this year's upcoming fiscal budget. Our nationally accredited fire department is also growing. The groundbreaking for the new fire station number two on East Chatham Street was early in early December and we are expecting to have that facility up and running by next winter. It is our goal to make sure that the fire department, emergency travel times, and all areas of carry are five minutes or less and these facilities will help do just that. In addition to response times, it's our goal that every firefighter is not only trained to put out fires, but is also trained as an emergency medical first responder. That way, the talents and skills not only save property, but also save lives. Carries Parks, Recreation and Cultural Resources Department, which is also accredited, continues to grow and provide significant benefits to our citizens. In 2014, we opened the 180-seat downtown theater, the Cary. Worked with SAS to open the 12.4-acre Veterans Freedom Park. Broke ground on the 50-acre Jack Smith Park. Approved the first phase of the 7-acre downtown park and approved construction of the new Carpenter Park. As the year begins, Cary has 30 parks, three community centers, a cultural arts center, a senior center, a nature center, and the Booth Amphitheater. Our greenway and trail system is becoming larger with 82 miles, 82.2 miles of completed greenway system so far out of 150.7 miles of proposed greenway trails. Within the next couple of years, we should have greenway connections from Lake Crabtree to the American Tobacco Trail. And if all goes according to plan, our trails, combined with other trails, should eventually allow a continuous greenway from Falls Lake and Raleigh to Durham. Cary's three major sports venues not only provide our citizens with recreational and entertainment opportunities, but also provide significant economic benefit. It is estimated that Wake Med Soccer Park, USA Baseball, and the Cary Tennis Park inject close to $8 million into our economy every year. Our reputation as North Carolina's amateur sports capital has allowed us to host over 50 college championships since 2002, including our 10th NCAA Division I soccer championship this past fall, and Cary's two softball complexes contributed another $2 million into our economy each year. There are over 680 miles of roads in Cary. The town maintains approximately 430 miles of streets, with the remainder maintained by the North Carolina Department of Transportation and private homeowner associations. About 60% of the portion that Cary maintains is in good or excellent condition. Unfortunately, that means that about 40% are not. As a result, the town's increased expenditures for road repair and repaving the last two years by over 400 percent since 2011. Moreover, the town is spending an additional five million dollars on road repairs from our 2012 community investment bond referendum. Many of the ma major road projects approved in 2012 bond referendum are already underway and several more will begin this year. The construction on the Walnut Street Bridge over US 164 near Buck Jones Road ramps kicked off earlier this month. Academy Street improvements will begin construction this spring to create a signature street in downtown Cary. Improvements should be made to Cary Parkway over US 164 to allow two continuous westbound lanes through the interchange where there is currently only a single through lane. In addition, improvements should also be made this year to the intersection of Northwest Main Road and Chapel Hill Road to improve the safety and intersection operations. The design plans for Green Level West Road will be completed this year and right-of-way acquisition will begin to move forward. Final design plans are in progress for Carpenter Fire Station Road project. All of these projects are making great strides and are funded as part of the 2012 Community Bond community investment bond referendum. The improvements will be paid for by the associated additional two cents tax rate, which should still leave us with the lowest tax rate in Wake County. Finally, a major component of our road network 
is our sidewalks to allow for safe pedestrian movement. The town has now over 417 miles of sidewalk. Sidewalks continue to be a big budget priority and are required with each new development project. Transit saw service expand during the last year with extended hours being added to the C-TRAN Monday through Saturday schedule. C-TRAN now runs from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. six days a week. In addition, an express route from Cary's Town Hall parking deck to downtown Raleigh was created as part of North Carolina Department of Transportation's Fortify project on I-40. If this route shows significant ridership, Triangle Transit may continue to provide this service after the fortified construction is complete. 2015 will be a year of challenges and change, with growth-related issues likely proving to be our biggest challenge. While Cary's growth is less than 3%, most of that growth is occurring in Western Cary, and too much growth in one area can overwhelm the schools, roads, parks, and other public services. Since the town council does not have the authority from the state to stop development, but only to decide which type of development may occur, it creates a dilemma. That is, while every property owner has the legal right to develop his or her land, the council has the responsibility to make sure that every proposed development can be served by the town's essential services, as well as schools, which are provided by the counties. So the council will be challenged not only with deciding whether the type of proposed development is appropriate, but also whether the services are available for that proposed development. School overcrowding, especially in Western Cary, will be a significant challenge this year. Although the town has consistently communicated growth data to, schools, to the school system for years, the funding needed for additional schools in Western Cary and throughout the county has not been available, resulting in capping of many Cary schools. Through my conversations with Wake County School Board members, it appears that capping for some Cary schools may be lifted this year. Unfortunately, a school bond vote to provide funding for additional schools will not be allowed till 2016 due to legislative restrictions by the General Assembly. So, School overcrowding will continue to be a problem this year and in future years. Congestion on our major roads will also be a challenge. The North Carolina Department of Transportation is responsible for maintaining and improving most of the major roads in Cary. Unfortunately, adequate state funding for these roads is not available. This leaves the current General Assembly to look for ways to improve roads throughout the state with very little money. For Cary, that means road congestion, especially in Western Cary, will also be a challenge this year. Other decisions made by the General Assembly have created challenges for Cary in the past and will likely result in additional challenges this year. The elimination of the privileged license tax cost Cary over $1.7 million in revenue, which is about a penny on the tax rate. In this year's session, the legislature will be looking at ways to redistribute sales tax collected in Cary to rural areas, which could result in an additional loss of $4 million in revenue. Other decisions being considered by the legislature that can impact Cary include efforts to eliminate our aesthetic controls of homes, fracking, which could impact our drinking water, not implementing the Jordan Lake rules, which allows pollutants in our drinking water, and the possibility of requiring municipalities to take on the responsibility of state roads, which could have a huge financial impact. Many of these proposed legislative changes are part of the ongoing rural versus urban battle in the legislature. It will be our challenge to make sure that legislators understand that municipalities aren't competing with rural areas and that we need to all work together to bring jobs and improve commerce in our state. We can expect good things to happen this year, especially in the area of communications. 
regardless of the providers, I believe we will see high-speed networks that are a hundred times faster than what's available today start to become a reality. Based on the company's projections, this could be available to a large segment of carry within about 18 months. Downtown will take more transformative steps this year as construction for the Academy Streetscape and Downtown Park get underway. The Academy Streetscape project will not only provide an aesthetically pleasing Main Street with better pedestrian access, but will also improve water and sewer that is over a half a century old. The downtown park will take about a year to complete and will create a great outdoor place for residents and visitors to enjoy a variety of activities. Construction's underway on the Maiden Inn and many new existing businesses are bringing new life into old buildings in our downtown. We anticipate new development announcements along Chatham Street this year and have several announcements pending. So keep your eye on downtown. More good things are coming. In conclusion, Cary begins the year financially sound, environmentally friendly, and is economically strong. Cary is one of the greatest places to call home, whether you're a resident or a business. I appreciate your trust and confidence in me as your mayor, and with your help, we will make Cary even greater than it is today. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.